The People's Liberation Army ground force is undergoing a major transformation in battlefield doctrine, shifting from traditional close quarters combat to beyond visual range BVR operations, enabled by the deployment of its new generation Type 100 main battle tanks. The PLA's modernization drive continues to reshape its strategic posture, with analysts noting that these advancements could significantly alter the balance of power in future high-tech conflicts. The Ukrainian-Russian war has convincingly demonstrated that the classic tank paradigm, which has dominated military thinking since World War II, is coming to an end. We are currently witnessing attempts by many countries to develop a new concept for the tank of the future. China is not standing aside either a tank called Type 100 ZTZ-100 was demonstrated at a pompous parade in Beijing. It should be noted that in terms of innovation, the Chinese model is significantly ahead of its Western colleagues. The Type 100 is radically different from its predecessors, which evolved iteratively from the Type 59 medium tank a replica of the Soviet T-55 to the Type 99 main battle tank. The first thing that catches the eye is its size and weight. One of the latest models of Chinese MBTs, the Type 99A2, has a combat weight of 54 to 58 tons, depending on the configuration. The Type 100 weighs between 35 and 40 tons, depending on the level of modular protection, which means it returns to the weight category of medium tanks. The most likely reason for this transformation is a change in the vision of a probable enemy and, therefore, the possible theater of war in which the new combat vehicle is planned to be used. Chinese policy is characterized primarily by a very long planning horizon in comparison with European standards, so it is possible for it to regain the territory seized by Russia under the Agen and Beijing treaties in the long term without the use of military force and tanks in particular. All that is needed is to wait patiently for the final decline of Russia. Instead, India is becoming China's main strategic adversary. The only land border between China and India is located in the highlands, in the Ladakh Pass area. Therefore, the tank equipment that was planned for large-scale use on the plains is not particularly suitable for mountainous terrain. The Chinese carefully studied the experience of using tanks in combat during the Afghan war. The Type 62 tank could not be used effectively in the mountains, as bridges and narrow mountain roads often collapsed under its weight, and when it was disabled, it usually completely blocked the road. In contrast, the lighter Type 55 and the completely antiquated Type 34 felt much more at home in the mountains, while the Type 62 was used mainly in the desert areas of the east and south of the country. It is striking that the Type 100 tank is considered part of a system that also includes the ZBD-100 fire support vehicle. The rationale behind this symbiosis is the belief that the situational awareness and firepower provided by a single vehicle are no longer sufficient on the modern battlefield. Therefore, the combination of two combat vehicles into a single system provides not only a constant exchange of information, but also mutual fire cover. Both vehicles are built on a single chassis, which reduces their cost and facilitates personnel training, repair, and logistical support. Compared to previous generations of tanks, the Type 100 has a radically changed overall architecture, primarily characterized by the use of an unmanned turret. Russian media were quick to label this design solution the Armada Syndrome, strangely forgetting or perhaps simply not knowing that the creators of the Armada borrowed this solution from the Kharkiv tank object 477, which was developed in the mid-1980s. A big step forward in the Chinese solution is the reduction of the crew to two people. The hatches for them are located in the front of the tank hull. Instead, technological hatches are located exclusively on the roof of the turret. In other words, the crew consists of the driver and the commander, with the gunner's functions almost entirely delegated to artificial intelligence. The tank's artificial intelligence, through the combat information and control system, uses a higher-level AI that performs certain functions of the headquarters of the unit to which the specific tank belongs. In the article titled Ground Force Fast Tracks Battlefield Transformation, Reshapes Combat Dimensions with Technologies, the PLA Daily quoted Sun Yongming, 
a tank commander from an undisclosed brigade, who described the shift as a dimensional leap in armored warfare. I never would have imagined that we, the armored forces, would one day be able to utilize optical, infrared and radar sensors to perceive the battlefield from long range and with full circle awareness, Sun remarked following a battalion-level tactical exercise. The Type 100 tank, which made its public debut during China's V-Day military parade on September 3, 2025, is equipped with advanced radar, electronic reconnaissance, and communication systems, allowing it to operate as a networked combat node. It can coordinate with long-range rocket launchers, drones, and electronic warfare assets, enabling precision strikes and real-time battlefield awareness far beyond traditional visual range. Military expert Wang Yunfei told the Global Times that the Type 100 represents an era-defining change in ground warfare. Instead of fighting alone at short range, the tank can now call in long-range fire support, share data across platforms, and operate in a joint combat network, Wang explained. He emphasized that China is among the few nations to successfully integrate such high-powered systems into mobile ground platforms. The PLA Daily Report also highlighted the integration of Army aviation helicopters, new type rocket launchers, electronic warfare systems, and unmanned aerial vehicles in recent exercises, showcasing the PLA's evolving multi-domain operational capabilities. A combined arms battalion commander, identified as Commander Yuan, noted that the new operational paradigm has surpassed the confines of traditional land warfare and reflects the PLA's growing proficiency in integrated joint operations across air, land, cyberspace, and electromagnetic domains. Historically, BDR combat has been the domain of air forces and navies, which operate large platforms such as warplanes and warships. Ground forces worldwide have faced technical limitations in adopting similar capabilities due to the challenges of integrating advanced sensors and command systems into compact, mobile platforms. China's breakthrough with the Type 100 tank positions it as a global leader in next-generation land warfare technology.